play something not for me to make a judgment on Alan Truman Ting's uh, decision uh, to quit and to depart from the new patriotic uh, party mm. and want to run on his own. Uh, but probably, if you look at it deeper, it probably may be a momentary lapse of uh, judgment. Uh, what Alan Truman Ting has done is to demonstrate his utmost displeasure and disappointment at the internal uh, wranglings and running within the new patriotic party and to shy away from his values that he shared mm. and to think that he probably uh, can make it as an independent candidate. I cannot but agree with Dr. Tua Champong that it's unlikely mm. that Alan Kojo Chimantin will succeed as an independent candidate to win the 2020 uh, for presidential and parliamentary elections. He can uh, win. I he can't see, also push it. I see into a John a victory. But what he has done is he has endorsed change. Simple. Alan has simply endorsed that where the country is, you say he uses word movement for change. So he simply has endorsed change. So he's welcome. But he's talking about a particular change. No, he says the people are well, tired of well, the duopoly. Welcome to the club for change. Mm. Primary, he's endorsed change. That change manifests in the fact that he's unhappy the way the MPP prosecuted its uh, internal elections the last time. And something I would give you some uh, assignment. I know that you take uh, interest in the mid, uh, in legislation that affects uh, political parties. Article 55, mm. how many of our political parties are living to the tenant's spirit and letter of Article 55? Are their activities internally democratic? Are they vehicles only for purposes of mobilizing for election? Or are they determining and influencing policy? These are questions i like you to tease more as you research into it. But uh, Alan, unlikely to win as an independent uh, candidate, he would do damage and hurt to the new patriotic party because he believes in change. And he believes in change because they have underperformed. I mean, I wonder when I hear persons in the new patriotic party say that they want to break the eight. Break the aid to exacerbate the suffering of Ghanaians or to do what? I mean, you came on the pledge that you end the suffering of the Ghanaian people. Today, in history, unprecedented suffering of the Ghanaian under your watch. I mean, Ghana as a rising star in Africa with promise in our economy, we are now witnessing the worst of our economic times. And therefore, what uh, Alan has done is to draw attention that the internal politics of the new patriotic party, I listened to the general secretary mm -hmm. and has provided some useful statistics from 1,900 delegates to 200,000 delegates. That represents a tremendous and enormous expansion of the electoral college. But much more can be done. You are talking of uh, millions of voters. Ultimately, over 10 million Ghanaians will take the decision. If you have 200,000, I do not still think that it's representative enough. So both political parties, NDC and MPP, have room to reform so that more persons can be part of the decision-making process. I know that all of them run to what we call polling station executives, which are about nine in an electoral area, and nor a polling station. And that polling station can have a population of over 10 to 20,000 voters, depending upon which particular constituency. Now, middle class and youth voters, which youth voters? What the youth voters want is change. So Alan represents that change. But the likelihood that he will carry young voters is not likely. Yeah, but you, you, are talking, you, are talking about, you are talking about him embracing change because of non-performance of their party in government. His but that's not exactly party in government. But, but, but that's not exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about the party deteriorating in terms of its uh, ethics. You and know, values and values, and they found but not and about values. their performance. He, he talks about how he feels that the system has been 
you know, arranged such that, and everybody talks about it, as if you must support Baumia or you are an enemy. He actually says his people are treated as enemies. And I'm saying that when I listened to the general secretary, and he says that there was no intimidation. In fact, there was beating and physical assault. So why are you hiding behind words and say that persons are still in office and they've not been intimidated? Isolated. Isolated cases, but it was general. We've seen all the other aspirants, whether it's a Jaco, a Japong, or the other, complain about the process and procedure. Even the determination of who qualified to be represented. There were arguments about how the headquarters numbers were determined. Were they consulted as a, a likely flag bearer? But uh, to come to think of it, people, when you look at the concern. policy... People have a yes. concern. But how do you trust Alan when he says what he's saying? Because in the political parties, these things happen where there is a preferred candidate Something of sort. We shouldn't endorse There's it a preferred a candidate we of sort. We shouldn't and, endorse and it. And almost everybody is whipped to support that particular candidate. In the NDC, it wasn't any different. Like? When uh, in the lead up to election of the flag bearer. No, Dufour ran, later withdrew. Uh, the former mayor of uh, Kumasi ran when the full hawk. There was competitiveness within it. We are lucky that we have a dominant flag bearer who is popular at the grassroots of the party and therefore they endorsed him 100%. It's unlike you are prevented. In, in Alan's case, it's as if he was tied down and asked to run a race with somebody tied down with ropes. That's how I would... Uh, how is that manifested it. differently from saying, what we saw in the... And I'm saying that in their case, they have what we call an establishment candidate versus all others. So Dr. Baumia is perceived, rightly or wrongly, as an establishment candidate against all others. That may be part of the consequence of what we are seeing, which is building up the apprehension and the disappointment. So the NT MPP internally must do a rethink to improve its democratic processes and its internal democratic processes and its reach to those potentially wanting to lead the party. In fact, Ejako e has, has said that Alan definitely is not alone and that people there are definitely many hearts. people within the party who are in his situation except that they have not checked out and, and the party should be careful. And Samson, what we need to observe, I've listened to Dr. Tua Champon's statistics. What Alan needs to do is to garner 3 to 5% of the total vote for the 2024 presidential and parliamentary election, and he's likely to cause some political havoc or damage, not just to the new patriotic party, but compel the election into a second round, if he's able to get 3 to 5%. Whether that is doable, hmm. I'm unable to make a pronouncement on it today. Let's see how he launches his... Uh, uh, butterfly, even the destructive elephant itself, nobody wants it in town now. And you are coming with a poisonous butterfly as I've heard somebody. I think interesting times ahead of our country. The new patriotic party had projected itself as one democratic whole. That reputation, they are losing it. If you listen to Alan and listen to persons like Ejaku, you'll be disappointed that this is not the new patriotic party which was launched in 1992. It's not the first time any, any party Ejaku stalwart would have broken away from the party. Others. As a stalwart of the party, they must be worried whether his following will go with him or not. That too, too early to make a pronouncement. I've seen a number of MPs. Uh, hitherto loyal to him, who have said that, and that has always been my position, loyalty should never be to a person or an individual. It should be to the institution of the party. My loyalty is to the NDC, not to any person in the NDC. But in their case, I've seen what may happen, something, and we have to watch it again, is in the process leading to the new patriotic party parliamentary primaries, a number of MPs may be rejected, maybe substantially. A number of them may choose to run independent and join the movement for change. So we may have a situation where for the first time in parliament, the number of independents may increase right. depending upon where they come from. And that is also something the new patriotic party must watch. Now, this is a matter that immediately after the elections, the party ought to have engaged 
the aspirants. I'm not sure they did. They that. did. They said they did. Uh, maybe, except that maybe they didn't do enough okay. uh, to assuage his head and the head of many other people. But in terms of message, I'm encouraged by some of the teams that Alan touch. Uh, adding value, providing employment opportunities for young people. But the question would be, you've been in office, uh, first, second time, supporting Nana Dudankwa. What employment A have decade you plus. been able, absolutely, what employment have you been able to create? And then uh, you also have to find out that within the new uh, patriotic party, dissent, what's the level of tolerance right. for dissent? Okay, well, he says... Um,